Hey everyone, um, figured to do a quick lunchtime auto video. Uh, so, so far we've did uh, an episode on faith uh, where I shared my testimony. Uh, we did a brief episode on uh, firearms. It was kind of just out there, uh, nothing real specific in mind. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick lunch video today uh, for you auto guys. And girls um, I thought we'd talk about diagnosing misfires uh, and maybe some VVT diagnosis uh, so generally speaking on a misfire diagnosis um, and this is just kind of the way I do things um, every manufacturer has their own specific uh, thing they want you to follow um, but I think mine's pretty tried and true. Uh, it's the process I always follow despite manufacturer. Um, so anytime you have an engine misfire, uh, whether you're setting a check engine light or if you can just fill the misfire, um, if you got a check engine light, you've got a DTC, probably P0300, which is a random misfire, or a 301 through however many cylinders you have, four, six, eight. Um, if you've got access to a scan tool, uh, it's the best way to do it. Uh, look at your misfire counter. Um, get a good, clear idea of which cylinder is consistently misfiring. Uh, there's a different diagnostic procedure depending on whether you have a specific cylinder that is misfiring or if you have random misfires across all cylinders. Um, if you have random misfires across all cylinders, it's more than likely a, uh, if it's a, well, we, we can go into that later. So let's say that we have a misfire for a specific uh, cylinder. Um, for the sake of simplicity, uh, we'll use an example of a four cylinder. Um, so let's say we've got a consecutive consistent misfire to um, cylinder number one um, first thing we want to do is swap plugs uh, so I'm going to take the spark plug out of cylinder one and I'm going to take the spark plug out of cylinder at least number three uh, you can do three or four you don't want to do the adjacent cylinder um, the adjacent cylinder more than likely uses the same knock sensor knock sensors are what the ECM uses to detect which cylinder is misfiring. Uh, so you don't want to use the adjacent cylinder. So you want to swap the plug for cylinder number one with either cylinder number three or four, uh, something away from cylinder one. Uh, and then you watch your misfire counter again. Uh, if the misfire follows the spark plug, then hey, you found it. Uh, put some new plugs in there. Uh, if the f misfire stays at cylinder one, uh, next thing we're going to want to do is swap coals. Uh, swap the coal pack for cylinder one with cylinder four or cylinder three. Uh, again, after we do that, we're going to look at our misfire counter, see if the misfire followed the coal, uh, for it stayed in the cylinder. If it followed the coal, then obviously the coal is the problem. Put a new coal on there. Uh, now. What if the misfire stays? So I got a misfired cylinder one. I know my spark plug's okay and I know my coal's okay, so now what? And this is kind of where different diagnostic paths uh, arise depending on manufacturer or uh, just preference. Me personally, what I like to do next is pull a fuel sample. Um, it's super easy normally to disconnect a fuel line under the hood. Uh, you can just cycle the ignition key uh, with uh, like a water bottle on the end of the fuel line. Um, just wait like three seconds, you know, two seconds, two or three seconds uh, while the fuel pump is attempting to prime the fuel system. And that'll get you enough fuel in that bottle that you can, you can take a look at what it looks like. Uh, and then let it sit, you know, just set it on your, your toolbox or your, your table or whatever. Uh, let it sit for 10-15 minutes. Um, if there's a separation in the fuel, uh, you got water in there. 
uh, which is a common mis a common cause of misfires is water in the fuel. Um, if you have water in your fuel, um, you got two choices. You can either run it out, depending on how contaminated this is. If you've got an intermittent, very light misfire, and you've got a quarter tank of gas, I'd probably run it out. I'd probably get her to empty. You know, if you've got a range uh, gauge, or if your vehicle will tell you what range you have until empty, uh, get pretty close to it before you fill up. Otherwise, uh, what we would do in a shop generally is we would charge customer uh, time to empty the fuel tank um, and uh, the cost of new fuel. Uh, generally speaking, you would hook a battery charger to the vehicle so that you don't kill the battery. And then you would uh, you just turn the ignition on uh, with the fuel line disconnected and just let the pump do its job. Let it pump out all the fuel. Uh, once it pumps out all the fuel, then you can add fresh fuel to it. Um, and then once good, clean fuel uh, cycles through everything, gets into your pump, gets into your lines and your injectors, and you're normally good to go after that. Uh, if you've got a heavy intermix, uh, you don't want to run that in your engine. Um, lean conditions, which is what water in the fuel will cause, um, it'll wash your cylinders, uh, well, the, yeah, because it's not able to fire, uh, but you can cause detonation, uh, all those are damaging things to, to your engine. Um, all right, let's say we take a fuel sample, and, uh, and fuel looks good, we just got pure fuel, um, so next step, uh, we can do compression testing and leak down testing, uh, I normally do a compression test, uh, and then right after the compression test, after writing all my results down, I do a leak down test. Uh, now, if you're losing compression on certain cylinders, uh, you definitely want to note those. Uh, but you don't want to stop there. You want to go ahead and do your leak down. So, let's say, you know, compression of cylinders may vary a little bit, but we're within spec. And so now we're going to do our leak down. Um, if the leak down for cylinder one is below spec, we've got a good idea that something's going on mechanically in that cylinder creating the misfire. So we've got a couple things. Uh, if you do a compression test or a leak down test and you notice bubbling in the coolant reservoir uh, you've got a you've got a blown head gasket uh, more than likely coolant in the chamber is not allowing the proper fuel air mixture to ignite um, that may be the problem also if you do a you know a leak down uh, and you're, you're leaking past spec with bubbling uh, it's probably exiting the uh, a coolant channel uh, with a head gasket breach a coolant chamber to combustion chamber breach um, you can also have a cylinder to cylinder breach or you can have cylinder to oil passage uh, which isn't very common um, during a leak down, if you're if you're failing a leak down, you want to pull the dipstick out, uh, or open the oil inlet uh, on the valve cover where you pour oil into the engine, and just take a listen, see if you hear any air coming out. If you hear air coming out of the the uh, dick stip tube or the oil fill on your valve cover. Uh, You've probably got bad rings. Uh, you're losing compression out of past the piston. Um, if uh, you also want to uh, take the induction piping off or tubing, um, just the section of tubing between the air filter and the throttle body, uh, and take a listen to the intake. 
open the flap if you have to. If you got air coming out of the the throttle body, uh, you got a problem with your intake valves. If you've got a problem, if you got air coming out of the tailpipe, that's another place you want to listen to. Then you got a problem with your exhaust valves because uh, I mean your lost compression's got to go somewhere. Uh, so it's either going to go into the head, into the coolant chamber, or it's going to go past the rings, past the piston, or it's going to go past the intake or exhaust valves. Uh, and that's kind of one way to isolate where you're going. Once you've, once you're at this point, and you've determined, hey, I've got leakage past my intake valves, or I've got leakage past my exhaust valves, you need to go ahead and get permission to pull the head, because uh, that's going to tell you what what else is going on. When you pull the head. Um, you can either send the head, if everything looks good by appearance, uh, depending on what your shop is capable of, uh, you can send the head off to a machine shop, uh, and they can do a leak, uh, leak test on the head, uh, determine what's going on. Uh, they're normally more familiar with taking measurements of valves, valve seats, things like that. Um, but if you're capable, hey, good job. Uh, start miking some stuff out. Um, try to figure out what's going on. If you've got leakage past the piston rings, then you know, you're know you going to have to pull the head anyway. Uh, take a look at the cylinder walls, see what they look like, see if they're washed, see if there's any scoring, see what your crosshatch looks like. Uh, you might get away with rings. This day and age, unless you're going to an honest mechanic who owns his own garage, Generally speaking, it's probably cheaper to put an aftermarket remanufactured or used engine in than it is to rebuild an engine to put rings in. Um, so yeah. So there's our uh, our quick little misfire discussion. Um, if you have any comments, any feedback, anything like that, yeah, uh, comment let me know. Uh, I think I'll save the VVT stuff to next video. Uh, we'll talk about firing order, uh, talking about... Uh, the combustion cycle, VVT operation and diagnosis. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll talk to you later.